This video is a tutorial sheet. So the first three videos have introduced the concept of root loci and how to compute these with MATLAB and how to deduce suitable values of gain. Here we're going to give some tutorial questions so you can check whether you've got it. Can you do it? We're not going to give any numeric questions to be done on pen and paper because generally speaking that's going to be subsumed by what we cover in later videos. Just a reminder of the context, we've got a simple feedback loop like the one shown here and we're assuming that within this loop there's a scalar gain k which is the only thing we're going to change. Third question then. Use MATLAB to determine approximately the value of k required to make two of the closed loop poles real and equal. Plot the corresponding closed loop step response and answer the question is this an effective design and you can use root locus and CISO tool, you know, do a compare and contrast. So here's this system, k, s plus 0.4 over s, s squared plus 6s plus 8. And remember the prime goal is to make two of the closed loop poles real and equal. Let's look at an answer then. So first I'm going to enter some transfer functions. I know what they'll be for the other questions, but g1 is for question 1. The so first thing to do is plot the root locus. So here we do, we plot the root locus, um, and I needed to do that command without the p. I'll go back to that one in a minute. So there's the root locus. So the question was, how do we make the closed loop poles real and equal? And if you look at this root locus, what do you notice? You notice that there's going to be a value somewhere around minus 3 where the closed loop poles are real and equal, and that's what I'm going to be looking for. So I've got all the closed loop poles out with a number of values of k, so let's have a look at these. And we're asking ourselves, where are the poles real and equal? You'll notice for column 6, minus 2.6, 3.3, they're coming together. Column 7, minus 2.97, plus and minus 0 0.2. So the k that went with column 7 must be approximately what we're looking for. Now, what values of k did we put in? Now, you'll see these are the values of k we've put in. So we need the seventh of those, and there it was, 1.2. So if I make k equal to 1.2, check where the pole is, there you go, exactly as we've expected. And then the final bit of the question was, OK, let's have a look at the closed loop responses. Does it make sense? And you'll notice with this command, I've put in a k of 0 0.8, which is a smaller k, k of 1.2, which is what we've specified, and a k of 2, which is bigger. So we can do a compare and contrast. And in fact, for this particular system, you'll see that the main difference between those k's is the speed of response and settling time, and of course, the initial input. But we've got reasonable responses, and our choice of k has actually delivered what we wanted. Now, it also says try CISO tool. So I'll do that. Let's run CISO tool. And what we've got to do is set these windows up, so I'll do that quickly. So there's my root loci plot, and you can see with k equals 1, the two poles are slightly separated. I need to set up my closed loop step responses so I can see what the behavior is like. So I do that there. Bring this down so I can see my compensator. Bring that across so I can see my responses. OK, so there we go. With k equals 1, doesn't look too bad but the two pink blobs are apart. So I could try 1.1, they're getting closer. I can try 1.2, and they're pretty much where I want them to be. So you can see with Caesar tool, it's just that little bit uh, quicker. Right, next example. Here you'll see we've got a cubic uh, G of S, and the question is, I want to find um, a K which makes the slowest, there's the key word there, so you need to read that, makes the slowest closed loop pole equal to minus 4. So how am I going to do that? So let's go back to MATLAB and we'll start with R locus. Oops, wrong one. Too many different windows open now. So here's example two. So first of all, let's do R locus of g2 and see what the locus looks like. 
and we said we wanted the slowest pole to be minus 4. Well, you can see what happens here is that if k is too big, the poles go back and get slower again. If k is too small, we're slower again. So we obviously want ourselves to be somewhere around here. So let's, I've put some arbitrary values of k in, and let's extract the values. So for these arbitrary values of k, remember we're wanting somewhere around minus 4 to be the slowest. So what can you see? I've got minus 10, minus 6, minus 2, minus 10, minus 5.8, minus 2, and so on. So we keep going down, keep going down. You'll see they're getting faster and faster and faster and faster. OK, we've got a minus 4, a minus 3.39, and here, minus 3.67, minus 3.7, plus or minus 0.44. So it looks like perhaps you can't get to minus 4, but you can get roughly to minus 4. And column 14 tells you roughly where you need to be. Now the values of k I used were here. So let's put see what those are. And where, where was column 14? 11, 12, 13, 14. And you see the value of k was about 26. Now I've put 22 here, but let's change that to 26 then. So I'll put k equals 26 in. Calculate the poles. And indeed, they are where you expected. Again, I can use overlay many to look at the responses. And there you see what you get with some different values of gain. Now, if we go back to CISO tool and ask ourselves, all right, can I use CISO tool to achieve the same thing? So I'm going to put in here G2. Go OK. Now I need all the other CISO tool windows back. Uh, not that one, sorry. There's that one, there's the compensator editor, and that one. So with 1.2, you can see where the poles are, not particularly where I want them to be. Now the difficulty here with this CISO tool is the scale it's given me on this isn't really what I need. And I don't think you're going to be able to change that scale particularly easy. So there's an irony here. You can use these pink, these pink blobs to quickly see when you're getting close to having them real and equal. But it's quite difficult on the scale here to see what's going on. Perhaps if I make the window much bigger, you can see a bit more clearly. You can see there roughly what's the best that I can get. So you'll see the answer there is going to be somewhere around 25. Remember, whether it's 22, 23, 25, it's really much of a muchness on real systems. Next example, use MATLAB to determine approximately the value of k required so the system has a damping factor of about 0.7. Now, we've put a little note at the bottom here in case you're not familiar with damping factors. If I write a quadratic like this, s squared plus 2 zeta omega s plus omega squared, and I say that the damping factor has got to be 0.7, that tells me that the roots of this quadratic are going to be this. S is approximately 0.7 omega into minus 1 plus or minus j. In other words, the real and the imaginary part have the same magnitude. So what I'm looking for is can I get the closed loop poles such that the real and imaginary part have roughly the same magnitude. So let's see if we can do that. So we'll look at example 3. I think the first thing I'm going to do is again plot the locus so we can see what we're looking for. So here's the root loci and we're interested in the real and imaginary part being roughly the same. So I can see roughly where that will be um, somewhere just past this joining point. So let's put in some arbitrary values of k again. There we go. And let's try those. So we're looking for real and imaginary part roughly the same in magnitude. So I can scroll along here and see what we get. And there, column 12. Can you see minus 0.04 plus or minus 0.0415? That's pretty much the real and imaginary parts are the same. So therefore, I can choose k to be the 12th value. There it is. Um, we should remove that semicolon. You can see what it was. So it's 0 0.0011. I can check in PZ map. Yes, it's what I wanted. And again, I can look at the step responses. And for this particular one, you can see close the inputs, you can see that the green one, which was the middle k, is the best. If k was smaller, you're slower. 
If k was bigger, you were a bit too oscillatory, which is what you expected from the root loci. Now again, we can try and use CISO tool and see, can we get the same insight from CISO tool? So if I import G3, and I better set the compensator back to one, so we've got something sensible. Now, with the compensator of one, you can see these two poles are unstable. They're no good at all. So let's put something like 0 0.01 get us in the right ballpark and you can see even with 0 0.01 we're not particularly good with this system here so maybe I want 0 0.001 that's looking a bit better but you'll notice the same problem as I mentioned before the scale on this particular plot makes it quite difficult to see exactly when the real and the imaginary part are the same now I can blow it up a bit um, and if I had a bigger window, it would be easier to operate here. But to put lines on that is maybe not as straightforward as you would like. But the advantage of Caesar tool, of course, is that I can see the plots over here. And so for this value of k, I can see the plot's not too bad. The overshoot isn't too big, so I'm in the right ballpark. So conclusions. We've given a few tutorial questions just to allow you to play around a bit and say, given this problem, can I use MATLAB tools to get a K in the right ballpark? And you can use root loci tools or CISO tool or a combination of the two.